In our life, we all have at least a small part of us which wants to win every argument that we have with others. We want to win, to show that we know what we're talking about and our interlocutor should be convinced by our logical reasoning and our undeniable facts. And when we see our interlocutor doing the same with us, we get angry. And if they win and we lose, we are angry and hurt. But at work, things are different. A win no longer means a win-lose situation. It very often means a lose-lose situation. The reason why this happens is because our approach to arguments is a little skewed. We still want to convince our interlocutor because we think that our point of view is correct, but we should learn to accept the possibility that our point of view might be incorrect, in which case, we make the necessary modification. And if we are correct, we shouldn't rub it in our interlocutor's face, but humbly feel content that our interlocutor learned something. If we win an argument with the wrong approach, we did manage to convince our colleague, but our colleague gets their ego hurt in the process, as we would if we lost an argument. As a result, our colleague may become resentful towards us, which means they may now become less likely to engage in or bring up any discussions with us in the future. So arguments can be tricky, but I am in no way saying that we should avoid arguments. On the contrary, it is a bad idea to avoid a discussion when a discussion is called for, because ignoring it, thinking that it will magically go away, builds tension, which impacts everyone's performance at work. Having different opinions can actually benefit us and the entire team. It's diversity of thought that brings innovation. So especially in the workplace, we should find ways to encourage and not to avert arguments. An argument is a disagreement or, or a debate, which means a difference of opinion. An argument is not a fight. Often, if not always, the more we argue, the less likely it becomes to convince our interlocutor. Seth Godin has said that you can't make people change, but you can create an environment where they choose to. This is what productive arguments are really about. So how can we have productive arguments at work? There are seven rules that I have found can help us have discussions at work resulting in a win-win situation. Rule number one, do not avoid. Our ability to bring up issues and to be willing to discuss when someone else brings up an issue has a big impact on the respect and trust that we build in our relationships. Like I said earlier, avoiding arguments at work can have bad consequences for everyone involved, our relationships and our performance. The advantage that we have in the workplace that we don't usually have in other areas of our life is that if there is something that we want to discuss about with our colleagues, then we can prepare in advance for the discussion. We can let everyone involved in the discussion know about what we want to discuss about and we can also share the list of points that we want to cover. This is a good thing for everyone involved in the discussion because now everyone, not just us, can prepare their stand. What this also does is it allows for everyone to go into the discussion with our emotions under control. The level of detail and time that everyone takes to prepare for a discussion depends on the kind of discussion that is to be had, but we should always give others a chance to think about their point of view on the subject matter before we actually have a discussion. Rule number two, keep calm and be kind. No matter the argument, no matter how right we think we are and how wrong our interlocutor is, we should always keep a calm and composed attitude. One way to make this easier is to acknowledge the things that we agree on. This also helps our interlocutor to keep calm as well. Being calm and kind sends the message that we are only trying to have a nice and constructive discussion and our goal is not to prove anyone wrong. And if that is not your real objective, try to make it. It will change your entire attitude when you approach any kind of argument. The goal of a discussion is for both parties to learn from it. All throughout a discussion, we should control our emotional response. One thing that we should be mindful of is to never raise our voice. We shouldn't view arguments as fights where we have to win. Instead, we should view arguments as discussions. We should always make it about the idea that is being discussed and not the people involved. At the same time, we don't have to hesitate to be passionate about our point of view. Rule number three, don't be overconfident. 
One very important part of a good discussion is careful listening. It is true that we often listen with the intention to respond. But in order to understand our interlocutor's point of view and to be able to convince them, we need to really listen to them. What listening does is it makes it very easy to see where our interlocutor's opinion fails. And also, it makes us learn something new. Sometimes we may even want to say, I may be wrong when discussing something. If we're not sure about what we're saying, we should say that. But even when we are sure, we can say it so that firstly, we show humility and save face because it can really happen that we are 100% sure of something and then have it turn out to be wrong. And secondly, create room for our interlocutor to do the same thing. In the workplace, we want to build a culture that allows for humility and why not mistakes as well, because mistakes translate into learning. One word of caution, we can use sentences like I may be wrong, but we should be careful to not overdo it. Overdoing it has a negative impact on our self-confidence and the respect and consideration that our colleagues have for us and our stand in the discussion. One element of our confidence is the language that we use. We should limit the use of contrasting words such as but, although, nevertheless, God knows how many times I have used the word but in discussions and I've even caught myself doing it but I couldn't help it. It is very hard to have full control of ourselves when we're too invested in our viewpoint. So the solution to this is we should detach ourselves from our stand. We can and should have our reasons and logic as to why we have this stand and not another, but we should think of it as just that, a stand, a point of view which, with the introduction of new elements and in time, could very easily change. Rule number four, stick with one strong point. We should build our stand around one strong point. We shouldn't keep adding argument after argument, but instead focus on one or a small number of significant points. This could be a tactic used by our interlocutor as well. They may bring up other subjects or arguments that are related to the main argument only remotely, wanting to maybe make us lose our train of thought. In this case too, we should bring our focus to the main or the few main points. We could say that is an entirely separate discussion and we can talk about it later. For now, let's discuss on our main issue. We should try to stick with facts and use logic when building our case. Something else that we could use is storytelling. Sharing a story makes proving a point easier because it allows our interlocutor to really listen to us and to relate to our point of view. Rule number five, use questions to change their mind. Good questions are questions that challenge our interlocutor's viewpoint. We should pay notice to their body language. If they are getting agitated, then to calm the discussion down, we can ask open-ended questions which makes them elaborate on their thoughts. If, on the other hand, they are discussing with us calmly, then we can focus our questions in the direction where we want to lead them in. Instead of asking our interlocutor why they believe in their point of view, we should ask other open-ended questions such as, for example, if we're talking about a particular process and we have a different view on a specific step, then we could ask them, how does the entire process happen? Generally, when our interlocutor distances themselves from the very specifics of their point of view and they start thinking about the entire thing, they could start to see where their logic is going wrong or they could simply understand our point of view. Rule number six, be prepared to challenge your own opinion. Even in constructive arguments, we go into one with the intention to convince our interlocutor that our opinion, our viewpoint, our idea, our solution is correct. Imagine the case where nobody concedes. I mean, we don't have to imagine, we must have all experienced that at least once. That is not a good argument. Both parties can keep discussing and discussing to the point where they become hostile and frustrated. The chances for them to listen to each other go down the more they discuss. And also, needless to say, the chance for future discussions starts to vanish. First of all, it could happen that our opinion and viewpoint are not in fact correct. We might have had a certain opinion our entire life, but that does not in any way make our opinion valid and true. If this is the case, we should be open to changing our mind because that's what we wanted our interlocutor to do in the first place. Sometimes the one who should change their mind is us. 
And second, if our opinion is correct, why not challenge it so that it becomes ironclad? If, let's say, we have the same discussion with different colleagues, we have all different points of view, we build our opinion in all possible fronts. Which means, next time that we have that discussion with someone new, we have a fully formed, mature opinion. Our ego very often does not allow us to challenge our own thoughts, especially if we are very invested in convincing our interlocutor. But once we silence our ego and focus on growth and learning, we tend to listen to every opinion that others may have and learn. Final rule for constructive arguments, be willing to lose. There are people who make discussions with them very difficult mainly because they believe that they are always correct and they want to always be the one who wins. Discussions with this kind of person become a frustrating and essentially a bad experience, one that we don't want to repeat. When we are dealing with this person, the best thing that we can do is lay down our arms. This is, of course, not to say that we give up on our opinion without even trying, to explain why we have that opinion in the first place. But if our interlocutor does not try to listen to us, completely dismisses our opinion, or tends to always either use demeaning language towards us, or does not consider any of our arguments, then that case is lost. We should end the discussion, or we could use the cliché saying we agree to disagree, or let the interlocutor carry on about their opinion until they are completely done, and then calmly say something like, I respect your opinion. I don't agree with it, although you make some good points. I also believe some points that I raise are good and valid, and I notice that you don't acknowledge them. So I would prefer to either come back to this discussion another time, or we can simply say that we don't agree on this point. Let me dissect this. I respect your opinion. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, even if it is 100% wrong, and we should always respect other people's opinions. I don't agree with it, although you make some good points. It's a good idea, even at this point, to acknowledge that our interlocutor can have some good points, and did have some good points, even though we don't agree with their overall opinion. We make our opinion known that it is different from theirs, but we show we're humble. I believe some points that I raise are also good and valid, and I notice that you don't acknowledge them. We show our humility again. Of course, we believe that our opinion is correct, but we could be wrong. At least some points that we are saying do stand. We also mentioned that they are not acknowledging our good points. We shouldn't say, and even though my opinion is correct, I notice that you don't acknowledge it. At this point of the discussion, we want to calm the waters down completely. So I would prefer to either come back to this discussion another time, or we can simply say that we don't agree on this point. We are still giving options. We are not deciding for the discussion because it's a discussion between two people or more. We leave the door open by saying that we could continue this discussion another time, which allows for both parties to calm down and maybe gain some new perspective. But we also put forward the possibility of never coming back to this discussion again because A, nothing will change and B, our interlocutor could be the type of person who wants to always win, in which case there is no point in going too far in any discussion with them. The most important thing here is we are not arrogant, we can acknowledge the valid points of ours and others, and we are always open to having discussions. It is not easy to get into the habit of having constructive arguments at work, or anywhere for that matter, but we definitely should. First, because we should never avoid a discussion when one is needed. Second, because it produces win-win situations at work, and third, because it helps us to always keep learning. Thank you guys for watching, I will see you next time.